What's going on, gearheads? Welcome back to the channel. So we got a little bit something different for you here. We have our hovercraft. Well, not really. It's an 87 Harley Davidson Sportster. So got the motor down there, actually on the ground. We'll take a look at that here shortly. But what I did is I got this bike for free from a buddy of mine who bought it and decided that he wasn't really too sure what he wanted to do with it. So he ended up giving it to me for free, and uh, let's just say I decided to cut it here, cut it there, stretch it out a good three, four inches, and uh, we're going to build ourselves a motorcycle. So he ended up going with an International Harvester Red from Tractor Supply. Um, it's pretty thick paint. Wanted to do a powder coat on it, but powder coat would have been pretty expensive, especially on a bike considering it's old, and it was a bit of a budget frame. But it kind of looks pretty cool. I'm pretty happy with the color, but let's take a look at the motor. So here we got the 87, maybe 86. We're not really too sure what size motor it was. Um, 883, maybe a 1000, not too sure. Didn't really do much to the motor. I did rebuild uh, the rocker, uh, new gaskets, new up here, but I didn't change anything else because I kind of like the way this looks. Not the oil dripping part here, but just the oldness of it. The, it's kind of beat up, has some flavor to it. But I did put in a digital ignition down here at Dyna. So hopefully it runs great. I know it ran before, had to get some lines done. Uh, went up to the Harley dealer to have some stuff done to it, just some new lines, but they really couldn't get parts for it. And a lot of their books didn't go that far. But before we dive into the frame over here, let's take a look at the parts table. I've got a ton of parts. We're ready to put this thing back together. So I know it looks like absolute organized chaos over here, but brand new brake caliper here. So uh, we're gonna put that on the back. It's gonna have a brake stay. We did custom weld a uh, brake stay tab on there. So that's gonna go in. Uh, new master cylinder right here with all the parts. Well, hopefully we don't lose too much hardware on the floor. Hate when you put stuff back together and you got extra parts left over. Happens all the time. And uh, carburetors, straight Diablo pipes over here, so it's going to be stupid loud. But hey, it's a bar hopper, right? Got our battery in, headlight, and we got some pretty cool forward controls going on here. But before we put all this on here, we need to grind down the frame. So I'm going to take you back in time and I'm going to show you how I did the frame. You know, I'd have so much room to jet ski. It's not here, but don't forget your eye protection. No matter how dirty it is, it kind of sucks because the humidity is so high that as soon as you put it on, it fogs up. But uh, yeah, still gotta protect your eyes though. Well, it just worked. see an extra hole there. I have no idea what this extra hole was for. Can't remember. I'm not going to admit that I drilled that. Looking at the frame though, um, got most of it cleaned up a little bit with the grinder. I'm going to finish that, finish it out and then probably get this bung in here put in, get that welded and bust out the welder and get some of this cleaned up. You can see where it was seamed together uh, where I welded it. I'm not a professional welder, but pretty happy with that. And then there's a big giant slug in there, so that keeps it there. Got some more bungs for the gas tank. Same thing down here. So it was pretty much snipped here, snipped there, and then stretched out. So there's for the seat mounts here and the fender. Um, then we grinded off the actual uh, VIN number so the DMV does it now. We'll say it's home built, right? So I've got all that there. But look at this awesome gas tank I built because we're going to put it right up here. Um, and again, these bungs are all measured out for the gas tank. It clear coated. And then I used a Cricut 
do the Harley logo here, stuck it on, and then clear coated it. But I threw it in the back of the truck for a couple weeks to allow it to kind of rust up. I'm gonna hit it real quick with a uh, angle grinder, cleaned a little bit up, wire brush, and um, yeah, pretty happy with that style. But I'm gonna pretty much mount right there. Pretty small tanks, little peanut tanks, so you're not gonna go very far. But who wants to go that far when you're uh, breaking your spine going down the street? But yeah, pretty happy with that. But let's grind some stuff down and let's get it cleaned up. Like a little starter coat there. Not too heavy. Probably remove that one. The rest of the paint is going to stick on. So I made a mistake with that bushing there. I accidentally put that brass bushing in there a little too soon. So I may have to ream it out just a little more, but uh, see how it, how it comes out. Get a nice little coat on there. Almost done. All right, so guys, we're giving it a little bit to dry. Um, it's not tacky anymore, but it was enough that I could actually flip it over and get the bottom set as well. So what's interesting is there are some grease down here. What's funny is I actually did clean it pretty well. So I may have to touch up some little extra parts in here, but again, it's the bottom and you can tell because this is from the 80s. So it's a pretty old bike that even though we did some grinding and cleaning up, it's still scuffed up down here. Just some old stuff here. So we'll probably try to get that cleaned up as well, just a little more. I mean, it is too late because it's painted uh, with a couple layers, but try to see if we can kind of thin it out with some more paint, at least so you don't see the gaps and stuff. But a lot of the motor's gonna cover this part up. Okay, right, so we finally got the frame back from the paint booth, the rattle can paint booth from my garage. And uh, we're ready to put the back tire on here. Hit it with some of that purple nurple, you know, the purple power stuff. Use it all the time. It's great. Um, pretty much anything, actually. But uh, it's all dry. Got our parts laid out. Got our axle. Let's jump over to the motor here really quick. Um, so I did actually fix the oil leak we had going down on the bottom here. So that's been taken care of. Again, we're not really going to clean it up. We're going to leave it like this. Kind of goes with our color scheme, right? Kind of old, red, old, red, beat up. So, kind of like it. But uh, yeah, it's gonna be interesting. So what we're gonna do is we need to get a rolling chassis going. So we're gonna do the back tire, see how far we get with that for tonight, and possibly do the front end up there as well. The hard way. Another set of hands would be so nice right now. And I'm sure there's way, way easier ways to do this, but I do things the difficult way. Such a pain of butt. Such a pain in the butt. So I will tell you, there is an easier way to do this. It would be to take the forks off themselves and just install the triple tree. Problem is, I couldn't get the forks off. Tried and tried and tried for days, can't get them off the top triple tree. Put them in a vise, could not get them off. Got her on here. And one of the biggest things 
just getting these little nuts on here to adjust the, well, pretty much adjust the, uh, the chain. What's funny is this actually had a belt on it originally. They didn't come from Harley with a belt, but somebody along the way installed a belt on it. So I thought that was interesting. I ended up pulling that off and again, did a chain drive. What's interesting about these hardtails is uh, I'm pretty sure there's gonna be some chain smack on the frame. So I'm expecting portions of the frame where the chain is to actually get damaged. I wanna put a tensioner on there. I thought about putting an actual chain tensioner, but uh, I've seen some horror stories with those there. But th so we got our caliper here. Pretty sweet, probably the coolest looking thing on the bike. So it's interesting. Um, these are pretty hard to find actually, just a caliper, but it was cheaper for me to buy this entire kit. It was a caliper and a front end kit. Didn't, ever, uh, didn't end up using the front end kit. But uh, here's that brake stay right here. So that kind of fits in like a spacer and you remove the original spacer that's in there. And uh, it ends up sitting here and it connects to these two rods right here. So we're gonna get this mounted in. And it kind of sits as like a, it floats on the bottom. It's a pretty interesting design. And our plate. Sorry. Oh my God, we put it on backwards. The fuck? What a pain in the butt. You know what? Let me pull out the pocket cam. The handy dandy pocket cam so you can see exactly what I'm up to over here. So that's it right here. Pretty tight space. This bracket's gotta go in there. So it's hard to push. You got that one spacer there. Then you have the chain tensioner spacer. Then you gotta put this plate in here. For this, go ahead and get this caliper on here. And take a look at that. There's that plate there. So that caliper is gonna float right down on the bottom, right down there. So it'll move. We'll be able to tension it between that mount and this mount to kind of adjust what's best we got going on. And then over on this side. And we'll get that super tight later. Pretty happy. So it's gonna float. And then I'm gonna put this little doohickey in here. So this keeps the caliper from essentially sliding, well, the mount from sliding forward when you slam on the brakes. So that's gonna hold, again, that brake in place there. So we'll get it all adjusted. It's not gonna stay here. We may need to adjust these just a little bit and shift back and forth. But that's pretty cool. Hopefully that weld stays. Again, I'm not a professional welder, so we'll find out when we get on the road. <laughs> like the past 10 minutes running around the garage trying to find this. I think that's a sign from the Almighty that it's time to clean up the garage. So, I have most of my tools out here, but I think I'm just gonna get these handlebars installed. I bought a few different sets at one point. Didn't really know what kind of style I wanted. I had some of those big ape hangers because a Sportster is pretty small and I'm a pretty big guy. So I wanted to be really comfortable. The normal stock Sportster bars kind of suck. They're kind of low, they hurt your back. I got a happy median here. I picked out these. I mean, lean them forward a little bit. I'm not too sure kind of how I'm gonna do this but may lean it back. Hmm. I don't know, what do you guys think? You like that Easy Rider look? These aren't really the proper bars for that Easy Rider style, or do you like kind of an aggressive forward stance here? So we'll probably adjust them as we ride and, and see what we like. Again, changes. I have some 12s on my Street Glide. Sometimes I wish they were a little bigger, but they're pushed all the way forward because of that Batwing fairing. 
can't really push them any forward. So this one, you can kind of go as far as you want, so. We'll get that put. And I actually didn't disconnect. Oh, I would have had slack, actually, look at that. So be careful with this, guys. This is really a crucial step. Um, I do like to get these nice and tight right now because this is one of the big things that you can actually miss, surprisingly, and people do it all the time. And first bump they hit, if you remember when you were a kid with your handlebars on your bikes, those handlebars would go flying forward or flying backward. So I do like to get these nice and tight. That way, I'll have to worry about it later on. And if we need to adjust it, we'll get it adjusted where it needs to be. You know, it's interesting, while I was working on it, I did find a few little blemishes here and there where it didn't fully cure, or I think my skin touched, but good thing the gas tank is going over that there. And those handlebars, really happy with the way this is coming out. Kind of like a new, old, beat up look. Pretty sweet. I've been really itching to see what this tank looks like when it's up here and it's gonna be close to those handlebars. So, but I gotta see, it's been bothering me. Man, look at that tank, that looks so good. Especially with the handlebars. Kind of a weird color scheme though. I mean, it's uh, red and then old rat rod blemished and rusted, but it's looking good. I think it's gonna turn out pretty well when it's all done. It'll kind of look like one of those junkyard parts bikes. My only concern, is the steering. It's a little too late at this point to adjust anything because I've already drilled the hole for the bongs and welded it in, but this is gonna be definitely close considering this 90 over here. So I think that kind of ends our uh, episode one here for the build on this sporty. Um, yeah, it's definitely gonna hit, look at that. Ooh, and yeah, we'll try to mitigate that later. Maybe shift the bars over a little bit, not too sure. But, you know, it's late, guys. I'm tired. Everything's done for what we have to do. We got the rear tire on, got the triple tree on, got the handlebars on, mopped up the tank. I think that sets us up for a good episode two and possibly get that motor in, get it wired, get all that stuff done. What I really want to do is get this darn seat on. I think this seat here is going to look really cool once it's on. Uh, oh, that's wild. Oh yeah, super, super happy with that for right now. But I think we're done guys. See you for episode two for the motor install, the wiring and all the other fun stuff.